American sports have been going on for over a hundred years now. And over those years, teams and fans have really felt what it's like to win and lose. Well, let's just entirely scratch this winning category because in this video, we'll be identifying the top 10 worst sports teams in history. Most of the teams mentioned will have no rings, no fans, and be no good. So without further ado, let's begin. Number 10, Chicago Cubs. So back in 1876, the Chicago Cubs came into existence as one of the eight inaugural MLB teams. From 1903 to 1945, they were one of the best teams in the league with nine World Series appearances. But then in 1945, well, it all went downhill from there. The Cubs, at the time, were already suffering with a 35-year World Series drought. They had a chance in 1945, up 2-1 in the World Series against the Detroit Tigers, in a position where they'd host the next four games. In Game 4, a man named William, the Billy Goat Tavern owner, bought two tickets to the game, for him and, well, his pet goat. So, of course, he was refused into the ballpark, as pets weren't allowed, and when he questioned why he couldn't bring the goat, P.K. Wrigley, owner of the Cubs, said the goat stinks, scent-wise. Okay, so now we're kind of in a pickle. Leave. As long as you keep this goat out of Wrigley Field, which you will, you shall never win a World Series. Cursed, I say. Okay, I'll go. The Cubs lost that series, stunk for a while, and in 1984, they finally made the postseason, where the new owner of the Billy Goat Tavern named Sam was invited by the owners to attempt to lift the curse. They won the first two games with the help of the Billy Goat, but when the team had to go to San Diego to finish off the series, well, they left the goat behind in Chicago. The curse was still intact, and they were swept the remaining series. In 2003, they finally won a playoff series, but then, Steve Bartman, a fan, interfered with a foul ball that could have changed the outcome of the game. Then, the Marlins scored 8 runs that inning, and the Cubs lost the series. So, by this point in Cubs history, almost all Chicago fans thought they were cursed. I mean, for the amount of things to go wrong, each one leading back to the Billy Goat curse, there there was just no other legitimate reasoning other than the Cubs are simply a bad team. But then, in 2016, when all hope seemed lost in the loyal city of Chicago, the Cubs miraculously won the World Series. They did so by overcoming the Indians after falling to a 3-1 deficit. The Goat curse, well, it was over. Their 108-year World Series drought was two, but for now, I guess Chicago ain't afraid of no goat. Number 9, Atlanta Falcons. Ugh, the Falcons. I mean, the Falcons by themselves are a bad team, but that whole Tom Brady debacle, well, that just makes it so much worse. You see, the Falcons were born in 1966, joining the NFL. The first years were absolutely horrid, and they wouldn't be actual contenders until 1998, 32 years after their expansion. That year, they won 14 games and lost two, and beat two tough opponents in the 49ers and Vikings during the playoffs. So just like that, they were in the Super Bowl. Why not celebrate, their team captain Eugene Robinson thought on the day before the big game? So, Robinson strolled around town that night, received a solicitation charge, and underperformed in the Super Bowl. As a result, the Falcons got their butts whooped against the Broncos. Then, Michael Vick came along as QB, receiving great stats with passing and rushing in the early 2000s. However, they didn't make the Super Bowl, rather, Michael Vick got a big bite on his resume, if you know what I mean. But you know when they did make the Super Bowl? 2017. With Matt Ryan at QB, they were to face the Tom Brady Patriots. Reaching the end of the third quarter, the score marked 23-8 in Atlanta's favor. I mean, a bajillion things had to go wrong for Atlanta to lose this. 25 points in just a quarter? It, it just contradicted what the entire point system stood for. But then, well, yeah. yeah. Number 8, Arizona Coyotes. 
It seems that the Arizona Coyotes have had far more trouble off the rink than on the rink, which really says something because they are basically the joke franchise in the NHL. In 1980, their franchise was born, however, they were actually the Jets, located in Winnipeg, Canada. They did, I guess you could say fine, but in 1996, they relocated a Phoenix. This was an immediate mistake from the get-go, because for one, you shouldn't choose a desert over Canada when it comes to hockey. Two, the NHL would soon realize that the Coyotes are a bad team in a low market with little fan support that was actually losing tens of millions of dollars yearly. And I can actually support this because I'm from Phoenix and I can tell you for sure that nobody here cares to watch the Coyotes. Anyway, after struggling to make the playoffs most years, the world would soon figure out in December of 2008 that the Coyotes were hundreds of millions of dollars in debt and were declared bankrupt. Their owner gave up the team and the NHL maintained control of the franchise until 2013. As of now, the Coyotes have agreed to settle into Arizona State University's arena while finding out where to relocate. Number 7, San Diego Padres. Sure, the Padres have two World Series visits up their belt, but besides that, the Padres have downright stunk. They've been around for over 50 years, and besides from their two World Series visits and COVID-19, they have won only one playoff game. In 1969, the Padres became an expansion team in San Diego and would fail to make the postseason 15 consecutive years. During those years, they held four 100 loss seasons, which is not something to be proud of. But then, everything went well in 1984, no offense to George Orwell. As I stated earlier, the Cubs choked to the Padres after the whole GOAT incident, and just like that, they were in the World Series. However, Tony Gwynn and the Padres couldn't quite beat the Tigers, and lost in 5. In 1998, they made the World Series again, but were swept by the Yankees. Since then, they have only had 6 years above 500. Number 6, Los Angeles Clippers. Los Angeles sports franchises are usually known for being consistent winners. You know, the Lakers, the Dodgers, the Rams. Oh, yeah, and then there's the Clippers. Despite being in the NBA for 50 years, the Clips have not even made a finals. Their winning percentage is among the worst in the league. They hire and fire a coach, on average, about every two years. Are the Clippers cursed or just bad? The Clippers' first 14 seasons were actually in completely different cities, Buffalo and San Diego. No success there, and the hump continued even longer once they moved to LA in 85. From 1985 to 2001, 26 years, the Clippers only had two years above 500. But then, of course, the at-the-time disgraceful franchise got a little better when Chris Paul and Blake Griffin played for them. While there, they made the playoffs several times, choked the playoffs several times, flopped several times, and left. Then, of course, recently in 2021, they made their first conference finals in their history, but, well, my sons took them down. Number 5, it's the New York Jets. As of recently, the Jets have had no expectations whatsoever, but a long, long while ago, in 1969, they made the Super Bowl. So with 11 wins and 3 losses, the chance of the Jets winning, well, it was a long shot. The NFL was dominated by the NFC division, which their opponents, the Baltimore Colts, were in. The Colts were 18-point favorites coming into the game, but what happened shocked the entire NFL. Before the game, Jets QB Joe Namath guaranteed that his team would win, and that's just what they did. The Jets won their first and only Super Bowl, 16-7 the score. Namath's guarantee would become the most memorable moment in New York Jets history. But ever since then, the Jets have been very bad, rarely making the playoffs, and when they do, getting knocked off early. Number 4, Seattle Mariners. In my opinion, the Mariners are the worst team in all of baseball history, and there's really only one statistic that stands out which makes me believe that. You see, in 2019, there were only two MLB teams that never played in a World Series, but after the 2019 World Series, the Nationals won, and that left the Mariners. 
1977, the Mariners were expanded into the MLB, where in their first 18 years, they had a mere two seasons above 500. Then, from 1995 to 2001, with players such as Ken Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson, they appeared in the postseason four times. In 2001, they had a really good chance, since they won 116 games, tied for the most in MLB history. But in the championship series, well, they had to face the Yankees. And you know what happens when a small market team has to play the Yankees? They get clobbered. The Mariners haven't made the postseason since. Number 3, Minnesota Timberwolves. Out of all 30 NBA teams, the Timberwolves have the worst overall winning percentage. Because they stink at winning, they rarely make the playoffs, making the Wolves have the worst percentage for playoff appearances of all 30 teams. And when they do make the playoffs, the Wolves have the worst playoff winning percentage out of all 30 teams. I mean, talk about being bottom of the barrel. The Wolves were expanded into the NBA in 1990 where they would fail to surpass 29 wins in their first seven seasons. But in 1995, Minnesota would receive a franchise player. That was Kevin Garnett. He would become a one-man team, carrying Minnesota to eight consecutive playoff appearances. However, they wouldn't win a single playoff series until 2004. In the 04 Conference Finals, they had to face the LA Lakers, and you know what happens when a small market team has to play the Lakers? And the Wolves would rebuild every year since. Number 2, Cleveland Browns. Believe it or not, from the early 50s to 60s, the Browns were actually good, winning a handful of championships with Jim Brown. But since they were in the AFL League, we could just take those championships with a grain of salt. From 1966 to 1995, the Browns would struggle for success, rarely making the playoffs and usually being knocked off in ridiculous fashion. In the 1981 playoffs versus the Raiders, QB Brian Seip threw an interception at the goal line, causing them to lose the game. In the 1987 playoffs versus the Broncos, John Elway made a 5 minute 98 yard drive at the end of the game, bringing them to the Super Bowl. Finally, in the 1988 playoffs versus the Broncos again, the Browns fumbled the ball at the goal line, causing them to, again, lose at the end of the game. So then, in 1995, Browns fans were devastated to hear their team was moving to Baltimore. Three years later, the Browns received a new team where they would continue to make one postseason in 21 years. During that same time, Browns fans had to watch Baltimore win a couple Super Bowls while they were just downright horrible with wasted draft picks and bad management. Also, one year they went winless. Let's head to number one. But before we do that, let's see the honorable mentions. Also, this is a perfect time to ask you to like and subscribe. Please and thank you. For the NFL, the Cincinnati Bengals. MLB, Cleveland Guardians. NBA, Charlotte Hornets. NHL, Columbus Blue Jackets. Finally, number one, the Detroit Lions. Yes, I believe the Motor City Lions to be the worst team in all of US sports. Back when the NFL hadn't merged with the AFL yet, the Detroit Lions were actually a fine franchise, winning four championships. But again, like the Browns, they weren't officially in the league we know today. However, ever since 1958, when they won a title, the Lions have only won a playoff game one singular time since then. So, in 65 years, the Lions have won one playoff game. In the 60s and 80s, Detroit made the postseason three times. It wouldn't be until 1992 that they won a playoff game. But even then, they were whooped by the Redskins the next round. As of now, the Lions have gone 25 years without winning a division title, 44 years without a Pro Bowl QB, and they have the most number one draft picks in the NFL, but not so much success to show for it. And from 2001 to 2010, they averaged 12 losses per season. In 2008, they became the first NFL team to go winless. 
The Detroit Lions have had some talents in Barry Sanders and Matthew Stafford, but both left the sad franchise to go elsewhere. Anyway, that's the list. The top 10 worst teams in sports. Thanks for watching, and Slip and Sammy is signing out.